Hello, nice to meet you. My name is GameSquid, and I'm a hobby artist who has interest in video games and a bit of anime and animation. Today I'll be presenting a character for the Rivals of Aether Steam Workshop, Al and Kabunkle from the Puyo Puyo series. I'll be giving a brief rundown of her history, her moveset, and her stage. Before we get to the real meat of this video, I'd like to give two special shoutouts to VVisit and Flair Habanero. VVisit, for making my art she comes to life, the guy did an amazing job programming her into the game. He also provided the gameplay clips you'll be seeing in this video. And Flair Habanero for assisting with Arl's design and proofreading some of the scripts, because he has far more pre pre experience than I do. Many thanks, you two. I'll be putting their Twitter pages in the description below so you can see what other projects they've worked on or collaborated on. Let's start with the question that most of you are probably asking right now. What is Puyo Puyo? Well, if your first answer was something along the lines of Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine or Kirby's Avalanche, you're not wrong. Puyo Puyo is a block dropping versus puzzle game like Tetris, where your task is to pop as many Puyos as possible and overwhelm your opponent to the point that they top out. The series is, believe it or not, a spin-off to another series called Madol Monogatari, officially translated Sorcery Saga. These were initially made by the company Compile, but after they went bankrupt in 2002, the series was handed over to Sega in 1998, or rather, Puyo Puyo was handed over to Sega, because Madol Monogatari was given to D3 Enterprises, which via Project Egg, have re-released past Madol Monogatari games in four different collections, and also collaborated with Compile Hearts to create Sorcery Saga, Curse of the Great Curry Gods. <laughs> D3 is also responsible for this awesome R figure, based on Madame Monogatari Assassin, which was released just last year. Those of us outside of Japan probably don't even know the Puyo Puyo series, or maybe have heard whispers of it. I myself didn't really know much about the series until around about two years ago when Sonic Mania came out because it had that Chemical Plant Act 2 boss, which was based on Puyo Puyo. For a long while, Western territories wouldn't get their hands on the series due to a mix of bad timing and identity loss stemming from the aforementioned Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine and Kirby's Avalanche. By the time Puyo Pop for the Game Boy Advance was released, most people had generally lost interest in the genre. Thankfully, there are very passionate people outside of Japan who are proficient Puyo players and have advocated for Puyo to be released to Western territories, and starting with Puyo Puyo Tetris re-released in 2017, Sega have been doing just that. They even re-released some of the original games like Puyo Puyo and Puyo Puyo 2 Arcade, albeit untranslated. The latest game in the series is Puyo Puyo Champions, which uh, has a lot more focus on the gameplay than anything else. Personally, I'd recommend the Puyo Puyo Tetris game, as it's basically two games in one and is more single player content to boot. Al Najda, I hope I pronounced that correctly, and Carbuncle are the two main characters of the Puyo Puyo series, uh, though thinking about it now, it might be more accurate to call them faces of the series, as more protagonists will be introduced, such as Amity and Ringo. But I chose Al as the main focus, since I think she represents Puyo better than the others, and Carbuncle too. Not only is he iconic to the series, but he would also be a good partner for Arl in my Smash Bros concept. He's strong too, you can eat an entire sword, oh god. <coughs> Arl was initially designed with Smash Bros in mind, uh, though to be fair, this is before the Rivals of Aether Steam Workshop was even announced. I have actually been designing Arl for roughly two years now, with some assistance from Flair Habanero. A good chunk of it was figuring out what to give her as a main gimmick. Change was an important aspect of Puyo Puyo, didn't seem to work in a fighter game though, so eventually it came up with the idea of the next queue, a mechanic that would definitely work in this setting. Around one of these two years was literally just me doing the pixel art for R in Rivals, without even knowing if it would, you know, be a reality or not. But here we are, it is. That being said, the character still might get a few updates for balance reasons and potential bug fixes. So, this is R at Kabunkle. Most of her design is based on Puyo Puyo, the fourth game in the mainline Puyo Puyo series. This ranges from her clothing and various animations, though I tried taking elements from all the eras of Puyo. While a handful of her animations are original, some of them are direct or subtle nods to her games. Her either when ground hurt states are directly taken from Yon, but her air dodge is inspired by her ice storm from 20th anniversary. If you can find all the subtle nods in her animations, then uh, congrats. <laughs> I was designed to be a moderately fast character, and even though she has slow air movement, she has a fast fastfall, just like quick dropping a Puyo. Arl's ground attacks are mostly original. Her jab is a 1-2-3 combo, ending with a carbug called tongue slap. F tilt is a roundhouse kick. Up tilt is a hand swipe. Down tilt is a two hit tongue licking from Carbuncle. And dash attack has Arl completely drop Carbuncle. Arl's strong attacks all revolve around Carbuncle's forehead beam. Depending on the input, he will fire either straight up or diagonally down. All of them have a sweet spot at a point blank range. Before I proceed with the rest of Arl's moves, I'd like to talk about her main gimmick. As stated before, the next Q is Arl's main gimmick. This houses one or two of the four Puyo colours, red, green, blue and yellow. 
and all of them alter the way certain attacks work, namely aerials and specials. All of R's aerial attacks utilise the next queue as she throws out two pruers that detonate on contact. All the attacks are original, save for the neutral air and down air, somewhat. Down air in particular is meant to represent the Puyo drop. Each Puyo has a slightly different property attached to them. The green Puyo is the standard and nothing exceptional. The red Puyo deals more damage, the blue Puyo deals more hit stun, and the yellow Puyo launches the opponent further. Throwing them out willy nilly is easy to do since the game is generally faster than Puyo, so checking what you have next mid aerial combo is, is probably unlikely. Conceptually, the arrows were meant to represent rotation, a common action in block dropping puzzlers. And now, our special attacks. For this, I'll be separating them into two parts normal and EX specials. Our neutral special is Fireball. This attack can be aimed straight up or down. If the Fireball hits the ground, it will travel along it for a short while. Side special is Ice Storm. This attack lets you dictate where to drop the ice shards by holding the special button. If the opponent hits the ice shard the moment it spawns, they will be spiked. Down special is Brain Dumbed, or Mind Blast as it officially translated as. This is a very slow moving projectile that stuns opponents on contact. The duration of the stun depends on the opponent's percentage and how long the projectile has been out for. Up special is Puyo Bounce, uh, the most original move of her specials. It's simply based on the idea that Puyos have helped the protagonist on occasion. It's a very standard recovery, but the Puyo I'll just bounced on will remain for a short while, acting like a bumper. Coming into contact with it doesn't deal damage, but it just knocks you away. Only one Puyo can be out at a time. Those are just the normal specials though. If a corresponding Puyo is available in the next queue, the special will be enhanced, as signified by the yellow outline I'll briefly gains. Not too different from the modern Street Fighter games. If a red Puyo is available, the fireball will create a massive explosion on content that deals more damage and knockback. If a blue Puyo is available, Ice Storm will drop 3 shards by default, but the positions are fixed. If a yellow Puyo is available, Brain Down will track the opponent, though the stun durations don't change. Just keep in mind that the projectile won't reverse. If a green Puyo is available, Puyo Bounce will send R higher, as well as having the Puyo remain out for longer. So those are our spells and specials, but you might realise that one particular spell is missing, Bioen. In my original Smash Bros moveset, Bioen would be our final smash, but since Rivals doesn't have such a thing, I decided to leave it behind. I apologise that I couldn't find a good way to make Bioen work in the game somehow. I did however decide to make it a subtle reference in her neutral animation. It's very brief, but it's there. Lastly, I'd like to introduce you to her stage, The Tower. No, seriously, that's what it's called. I couldn't find a more official name, so The Tower, it is called. The Tower is a reoccurring location in the Puyo Puyo series, starting with Puyo Puyo 2. This particular tower mainly takes inspiration from 2, with some elements from Puyo Puyo Fever. On the stage, you can see a few cameos. You have Shezo in the center, probably waited to uh, <coughs> suck the energy out of Arl when he gets a chance. Then on the right, we have Rulu making advances on Satan, or the Dark Prince. I don't think he approves. And then on the left we have a mysterious figure looking down at a, a clown mask. Maybe it's best we leave her alone for now. This stage is very simple by design. The top of the tower is the main platform and then there are two smaller platforms at the very edge. It's a very small stage. The songs that have been chosen for this stage include the 20th anniversary arrangement of Arl's theme, final of Puyo Puyo from the original Puyo Puyo, the ruins theme from Puyo Puyo, and Zato Battle from Madol Monogatari Saturn. I wanted to add a bit of Madol Monogatari representation somewhere. <laughs> and I'll conclude this full presentation of R and Kabunku in Rivals of Ether. Once again, huge thanks to V Visit for programming R into Rivals. I am forever grateful. Their Twitter will be put in the description so you can check out their other works. R and Kabunku and her stage are both in the description so you can download them into Rivals and try them out. Feedback is very much welcomed. And with that said, I'll be seeing you uh, elsewhere. I don't really make videos anymore, so I guess I'll put my Twitter in the description as well, so you can check out whatever else I do. Uh, just be wary of what I do make. But thank you for watching this video, and I hope you enjoyed the character. I'll see you around!